Hello everybody, welcome to another Python Mathematics and Finance tutorial video. In this video we're going to be talking about the uh, moving average envelope. This one's pretty simple and simple enough to where I can condense it all into one video. So first let me just show you guys this envelope. It looks a lot like maybe these Keltner channels or Bollinger Bands. So let's take a look at, uh, let's look at Toyota. So here they are for Toyota. It's the actually being plotted here, right, on price. And so the idea of these is to, you know, encapsulate price. And you can find when there's been, you know, like a breakout. Like, for example, if we zoom into maybe this area here, we can see where price has broken out here. And that's obviously a very bullish indicator. Bro continues breaking out, still bullish. And then finally here it breaks out. Now we've got a bearish signal. Uh, and again, bullish, 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 bearish, right? Um, so these uh, are actually pretty simple. What you're doing is you're just taking a simple moving average and then you're multiplying that simple moving or adding, you know, maybe a quarter or a, even like a quarter of a quarter times that simple moving average. You just plus that and minus that to get the direction right. So that'll also, um, it will adjust itself by uh, volatility, right? So like here you can see it's you know not too volatile as far as you know comparison to here is how much price it's been swinging around by, right? So the gap is much smaller here than it is here. It gets much wider. So um, so it will automatically adjust and it's just like I said, it's like really, really simple and you can see it really comes down uh, here. It gets really thin there and then it comes back up again. But uh, anyway, very simple because it's just a simple moving average and then you add like a multiple of that simple moving average to the simple moving average and boom you've got yourself some channels um, so yeah so let's go ahead and get into the actual programming of this to do that let's go to uh, syntax.com the sample code is in there's a link for it in the description uh, that should take you to here just come up to this script and copy and paste everything in this script and then go to an empty Python script and paste it in. So I'll bring it over here. Let me just fit it to screen. Copy, paste. And normally if you have been following along, everything gets done right in here. But for this video, we're not going to do that because we want to plot it on that on the price, right? Not on that bottom axis. So we're going to come all the way up to basically here and just hit enter like a bunch make some space and uh, then we're gonna go ahead and comment out these two lines and because we've done that the legend is gonna like scream at us so do a control F and in this little box type in legend and you'll find this little block of code right here comment it all out so we'll go one two three and one two three so now we don't have to worry about those prices being shown all that's gonna come up now on that middle axis is the candlestick Next, uh, what we want to do now is do this moving average envelope. So, uh, tab over a couple times and we'll define ENV for envelope. And this is going to have two parameters that we're going to pass through prices and a time frame. So whatever envelope time frame we want. It's going to have, it's going to generate three lines, right? So we need an upper line equals empty, a uh, lower line equals empty, and then we want that middle line and that'll be equal empty as well for now. Then we're going to be using simple moving averages. So I'm going to say SMAs equals moving average, whoops, uh, prices time frame. Now, moving average, uh, we've already covered that in a previous video. Uh, so if you want to know more about how we calculate moving average, check out that video. Next, get rid of that slash. Next, we want to say for each SMA in SMAs, what do we want to do? Well, we're going to say upper line, so ULS, equals each SMA plus, and then in here, you can put whatever value you want. Uh, 0.05 seems to work pretty decent. So we'll say 0.05 times each SMA. So as you can imagine, that just adds a little bit to the SMA, right? And that'll kind of help us uh, create these like gaps, right? Plus, while it does that, it's also going to react to that simple moving average depending on how much, how fast it's changing. So that'll make the gap either get wider or thinner, and which is also kind of an indication of uh, volatility change. Anyway, um, next thing we want to do is lower lines 
equals, uh, and this is going to be the same thing, only a minus, so I'm just going to copy and paste this line. And instead of adding, you're subtracting. And then uh, middle lines is just equal to each SMA. Next, we're going to say upper line dot appends, upper lines, lower line dot appends, uh, lower lines, and middle line dot append, middle line. Finally, at the end, once we've exhausted this for loop, what do we want to do? We want to return upper line, lower line, middle line. So that's that. Now, uh, what we want to do is come down to where, okay, cool. So now what we want to say is, um, let's see, upper line, lower line, middle line equals ENV, right, ENV, and then price is time frame. So we're going to use close price and a time frame of uh, 10. So now, uh, all we really need to do is ax1.plot, and we want to do date minus sp colon. That's just for our starting point. If you want to know more about that, check out the charting stocks in Python tutorial series. Date, upper line, uh, don't forget your minus sp colon. Oops, minus sp colon. And in fact, I'm just going to copy and paste that. X. Well, never mind. We're going to copy and paste this whole function. And we want that line to be white. Now I'm going to copy and paste this whole thing. Paste that twice. Bam, bam. And now upper line, cool. Lower line, and then middle line. And that's really it. We should be able to plot this now, I believe. Mine says be upper line, upper line, middle line. Looks good. Let's do it. Here we go. So, stock to plot. I'm trying to think of a stock we haven't actually plotted yet. It's like a bajillion stocks, and I just like can never think of a decent one. Let's do let's do a big for big lots. All right. So obviously the lower indicator is empty because that was kind of like the way we left it. So we could do the other videos, but this one, as we can see, we de definitely uh, definitely got it. This one's obviously a pretty volatile stock. It's got a lot of breaking out both on the uh, top and the bottom going on here. Um, quite the swinging stock. Well, I mean, look at that. That's a pretty interesting stock. Um, if you could time those swings, lots of money to be made there. Anyway, uh, so that's Big Lots. As you can see, that it did indeed work out for us. Uh, let's look at another one. Let's do uh, Google. And again, so here's Google. Um, fit it over here. Cool. A lot of breaking out for Google as well. So if you happen to, if you don't want to see like so much, like, cause that's, that's really where the signal comes from is where you have either a breakout on the bottom or a breakout, you know, on the top for bearish and bullish breaking out. Right. Uh, so if you don't, um, like you can change that obviously by coming over to your formula and say you wanted to see like, you only wanted like a, like a solid breakout. And that was the only thing you'd be interested in. You, you would raise this number. Okay, so let's say 0.07 now. Now let's look at Google again and see if we have just as many, or Big Lots would probably be another good one to look at. <clears throat> anyway, you have a lot less breaking out going on. So if you wanted to create like an algorithmic trading system on this that said, hey, buy, uh, you would get a lot less buy signals, but they'd probably be a little more solid uh, when it came to the buying signal itself. So, um, like a good example of like the trading system that people would build off of this would be like right here, right? So every time it breaks up out, you buy into it. And then as soon as it comes back in, you would sell out of it. And then again, you would have done the same thing here, bought in, and then you'd sold out right up here. And you know, you would have made a decent uh, amount of profit there. Uh, the real question is, did you make more profit on that time frame rather than just buying in here and holding all the way till today, right? And doing nothing. So, and probably not. You probably made more money holding. So, anyway, those are your moving average envelopes. Uh, pretty interesting, very basic, and very easy to implement into any, basically any trading system. And also, as far as like breakouts are concerned and buying, you know, you could just strictly calculate that upper line. And then every time price exceeded that upper line, um, that would be a buy signal, right? Uh, and then you would hold that until price got back below that lower line sell signal and you're good to go. So anyways, uh, that's going to conclude the uh, moving average envelope. In fact, that kind of makes me want to save that idea for later and maybe we'll, we'll back test the system of buying at, uh, and you can use machine learning to figure out the best 
little line there, <clears throat> or the best number to multiply by. Anyway, um, backtest that idea, see how, see if that actually works, and see if that does actually beat uh, buying and holding. Anyway, ideas for the future. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, hopefully you learned something new. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for all the support and subscriptions, and until the next video.